This episode of this Focused Practical Dreamer's Journey is brought to you by energy healer Jean Borders' personal powerful transformation program. Know you're leaving money on the table but can't figure out how to bring it in? Need to double your productivity and profitability? Need an extra push to get things moving in the right direction? Visit www.focusedpracticaldreamer.com slash transformation now and apply for a business consultation with Jean. Welcome to the Focused Practical Dreamer's Journey, where we take out your emotional baggage and heal your emotional body so you get to enjoy the success you desire and deserve. Prepare to feel a sense of relief and empowerment as we get rid of the baggage you've been carrying that's held up your business success up until now. Be sure to visit our website at www.focusedpracticaldreamer.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, lean in, get comfortable, and prepare to take off. Hello, everyone. This is Jean Border, your host for the Focus Practical Dreamer's Journey. I have a special guest with me again. This is Kitty, and she is a clutter expert, which I find fascinating. Hi, Kitty. How are you? Oh, fine, Jean. Uh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course, of course, of course. Talk to me a little bit about how you got from where you are to where you are in your business and what your business is. Well, um, my business, is, uh, I'll do that in reverse order if it's okay. okay. Um, I help entrepreneurs to declutter their space and their brain so that they can focus on, focus being the operative word, on being profitably productive. Because I believe that uh, it's clutter is insidious. And we can talk about physical the relationship, physical clutter to mental clutter. But you asked how I got started, and I I was pretty orderly as a child. And then then we fast forward to my my I've always had kind of organizing jobs. Like my first job out of high school was as a file clerk. Remember paper, reams and reams of paper, and it was in a bank yet. And I got I love paper. I shouldn't tell you, but I love paper. I love colored paper. I love paper in books. I love paper on clipboards. I love paper. Uh, okay. <laughs> and it can add up. And I I got promoted to the accounting department, and a, a couple months later, a lady from where I used to file, she came and said, would you consider working for us part-time? Because we can't find anything. Uh, now, you would think that it would be fair, fairly straightforward, A, B, C, but uh, then moving on to uh, restaurant restaurant work, and I was always the waitress who was voted to clean the walk-in fridge. You know, at the end of at the end of those cook shifts, I'll tell you what, they just toss everything in the fridge because they want to go for a beer. And it, it drove me nuts. So I really enjoyed that. Being able to find things and just the calm and and the the quiet of a of a of a nice organized fridge. And then fast forward to a real estate cleaning career. And I always felt myself kind of compelled to move the clients' things just even an inch or two, just so things flowed better. I'm a, I'm about flow as well as getting rid of clutter. And always the the, the clients liked it. I was lucky. Uh, <laughs> and then when I thought, so I'm not sure that I want to be an elderly cleaning lady anymore. <laughs> or I don't want to turn into an elderly cleaning lady. Uh, um, virtual decluttering was, was brought to my attention. At, at that time, there were only three practitioners in the world that I could find. This was back in 2018. Before before COVID, before we were stuck at home, and I thought, okay, well, give it, give it a test run, and um, here here I am now. It's been described to me by a realtor buddy. It, it, when I told him what it was, he says, "Oh, well, that sounds like a less intrusive, more focused way to get rid of thirty years worth of stuff." And I said, "Hmm, yes." And that sounds like a good tagline. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. 
<laughs> and that's where where I am now. And many times, uh, they don't. Uh, they may not be entrepreneurs when I meet them, but something happens during the decluttering process, and they start to think about, well, why not me? Why not maybe a cottage business or some something on the side? You know, I've been doing corporate for so long. You get the idea, right? Yeah, the um, it possibilities open when you declutter. And I've got a couple of stories for you, depending on how much time we have. Um, but that's where I'm at now. I'm all about opening possibilities. That that we so often we get focused on we get tunnel vision. We get focused on this one thing when really, if we just opened our minds, if we allowed space to open our minds, we yes. might find something totally different that we really, really enjoy. Mm -hmm. But we can get, our vision can get, uh, and I don't mean necessarily our, our vision like I'm looking at you here, but uh, the vision in your head is is clouded by what I believe are, it, uh, I call them ghosts, ghosts of the past. And we're, we're, we're speaking to entrepreneurs here. And how many of them are holding themselves back by keeping things that, uh, frankly, no longer serve them where they're at now? If exactly. And we find all, all manner of reasons to justify why we're holding on to things. Mm -hmm. Well, they might want that back, so I should hold on to it. Well, have they asked for it in the last eight years? Well, no, but they might remember that I have it. No, not really. Could someone else utilize it? Could you donate it to someone who really could use it right now? There are so many ways of changing our view about physical clutter and mental clutter. Mm -hmm. Which I believe are so entwined, even, even in daily life. For, and that's why I've developed my one system, which which we'll talk about, I hope. Uh, and it it makes everything it makes it simplifies everything. Now, uh, when I say about physical and mental clutter um, combi combining, we get busy through the week, do we not? And by Wednesday, I'll tell you what, uh, my kitchen counter is starting to, to show the strain. I don't mean piles and piles of things, but something that I've dropped there, and I'll get to it. I really will. Uh, or it, it just things aren't as lemony fresh as they were on Monday morning. And I'll tell you what, and today happens to be Wednesday. <laughs> and a quick little tidy, five or ten minutes, and a quick wipe, and... It, it it works every Thursday morning. I feel renewed energy, and it, if you can make it so that it only takes that five minutes, five or ten minutes to say, for example, in your office, um, get that renewed energy back, so you can make that extra push, and then that's what I'm all about is making it as simple as possible because frankly, Gene, uh, decluttering can be overwhelming. And that's why a lot of people don't do it is because they just don't know where to start. Well, the longer you put it off, the harder it is to start because the piles get bigger mm -hmm. and it becomes overwhelming inside your head, much less overwhelming in your room. Yeah, and it's what's it it it, it really uh, affects your confidence, and this is what concerns me most about clutter when when you're an entrepreneur because I've been there, and in fact after I moved I was there again. Transitions will bring about clutter because because it just does. You get behind, like say for example, if you've moved well. It's going to take you a bit of time for the for the energy dust to, dust to settle, even though you're pretty much keeping on top of things. And the quicker you can get things back to square one, and yep, we're in business, because we wear so many hats that the more organized you are, the better... Uh, the better you come across to a potential new client on a discovery call 
or your existing client when it's time for renewal and maybe they've been thinking, geez, you know, she always seems pretty disorganized. You don't want that, do you? You, you want to feel like you, you want to feel and project like you like you know what, what you're doing. So clutter can literally cost you money. And um, I was on uh, a discovery call, or I was on someone else's discovery call, and twice, and both times she she was really disorganized. And I just thought, oh, God bless her, but I can't. I can't. You know, I've got to make sure that I'm looked after. And as entrepreneurs, no matter what the business, I'm sure you would agree that we want, we're we in the business because we want to look after people. Yes? Yes. Yes. So we want to um, feel our best. And confidence is huge. And if you are cluttered, you are not good. Uh, unless you've got a better magic wand than I have, uh, you're you're not performing at, all, at optimum. Now, there are many people who say, well, okay, yeah, I know exactly what's in that file, and that file, good for you, good for you. But many of us are not that, uh, uh, yeah, we don't, we may not have that talent, and you find yourself searching for that person's file just before you're getting on the call with them. That reflects. As we're talking, you know, <laughs> memories come in, right? <clears throat> In my previous career, one of my bosses, now this is a high-level guy, right? We're, we're, we're not talking entry-level. We're talking high-level guy, corner office, the whole bit. Okay. He had probably 18 months worth of Wall Street journals piled in stacks around the floor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on tables, and you're like, oh, but I haven't read that one yet. Well, it's, you know, it's a year old. Do you really think that information is going to be valid or current or useful at this point? Or well, yeah. it's been superseded, to use a government term we use that all the time. That information is now superseded. It's no longer relevant. There's updated information. But you're not going to know that because you're tied to holding on to something that is not serving you, is not serving the people who come into your office and see that, right? Right. But it and also, in my view, created a barrier for him to feel safer. And that 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 is a huge possibility. Also, guilt, guilt about you know I didn't read that and I should have read it, and I'm kind of keeping it because it, almost to make me feel, make myself feel bad, to feel the guilt. Sometimes you need to just go back to default. There's a whole uh, woo and energy, which I know that you're, you're, you understand. And there are a myriad of reasons why people keep things. So we've only touched on two of them. Good heavens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when someone first comes to you, how do you start off working with someone? What do you look at? What kinds of things do you look at first? Does it depend on what they came to you for? Or do you, do you find that really most people have the same underlying place to start? How does that work? Well, it, it, it depends on a couple of things. And that's a good question. Depends on a couple of things, uh, like whether they are entrepreneurs or the or they will be. It depends on their situation, on their age. But one thing that I can tell you that is a an absolute constant constant is that they come with the physical clutter. And about three weeks, but three weeks into into our sessions, they start to say, "Yeah, yeah, I know what I'm doing next on that. It's it's okay." Um, but I want to talk to you about something that my husband said that kind of bothered me. And that actually happened. Can I tell you quickly? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I used to only focus on the physical, and then I noticed this phenomenon. And this woman, we've been working together, uh, we had us three, four weeks, and she said, you know, my husband said, said something to me I'm not really sure that I liked. And she told me, and it wasn't too bad, but, you know, it, it, 
wasn't great. And I said, hmm, something, has he ever said anything like this to you before? And she stopped and she thought, and she's in her mid fifties. Uh, she said, you know, come to think of it, he has said that kind of thing, not degrading, but just not exactly uplifting. Um, for the 25 years of our marriage, I just never noticed it before. Now, the, the, an aside note on that: these these two people, um, they're they, they never meant a hobby or a craft that they didn't like. So there was a lot of clutter and the wind signs. Then she also started a fitness program, which she had been meaning to do for a while, and just yep, yeah, I'm going to do it. What I believe is that as the physical clutter was starting to mount away, be, be, dis be dispersed, be, be dealt with mentally as, as well as physically, because it's, it's all up here because you're making all these decisions. Um, as that was going, the layers of the onion started to peel back and you can see the other four pillars, your, your heart, meaning your relationships, your habits, your health, and your head, hence my company named Declutter the Brain. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just fascinating when you think about it, when you're an entrepreneur, it's not all about your work. We talked a minute ago about juggling, juggling a bunch of things. Good chance that uh, your listeners have, are juggling um, marriage and children and maybe aging parents and, and, and all of those wonderful things that are part of our day and age. No, and don't get me started about digital clutter. You <laughs> know. <laughs> and we're luckily, I love folders. Otherwise, I would just be lost. So many oh. downloads, so many things you have to keep track of, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And how do you stay on top of it? But one thing um, that someone wiser than me, when I first started, she said, remember, you cannot organize until you declutter. You can, but you're not going to do it very well, frankly, because you're basically just pushing things around. And those are the ghosts that I was talking about before. Things, maybe old courses that you took a long time ago, I just saw my first business course. Now, a lot of it is still applicable and has good lessons in it. But there, there may be, there's parts of that program that no longer serve me because, frankly, they remind me when I was young and green. And, I, you know, I like to think that I've progressed past that. Those are the kind of things that I have seen entrepreneurs um, and those about to be uh hang on to for, well, I might need it again, or yeah, I didn't really like that, that, uh, that person or the instructor, but there's probably some good stuff in here. So I hang on to it. What is that energy saying to you? Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? What does it, what is that in day? I ask you. I actually have, now that you're saying that I have some really old courses. Now, some of them I paid a lot of money for, and I didn't utilize the way I should have. There's that one. Yes. 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 And other ones I really, really, really enjoy, even though I enjoyed at the time, even though I'm not using them now, there is an emotional attachment to them because I like the content. Yeah. yeah. So there's different types of energy attached to the same type of product, if you will, right? Yeah. You may have been good point. You may have uh, good memories about the instructor or the people that you took the course with, for example. Like in that first course, I, I'm in touch with a lot of those people. And that course was say um, four or five years ago. And I, we, we still converse now. That's a good memory. But uh, it's, it's all between the ears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But how to get how to get rid of it? That's where the and whether to get rid of it. And you know that you you should. How do you get past the overwhelm? I bet is going to be your next question. Is is that one of your next questions? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> okay. Um, my one sister. 
It's developed. A, I developed it because I am being curd carrying, flag waving, ADHD, or I need things to be as simple and streamlined and structured as possible. Otherwise, my brain goes off in a million different directions. And not surprisingly, that's the kind of client that I attract is people with very busy brains. And of course, entrepreneurs in a recent study, 30% uh, in this particular survey uh, admitted or er, said that, yeah, I've been diagnosed ADHD, and I hate that word diagnosed. It's it's not an illness, but <laughs> the way your brain works, that's all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not the way your brain works. Why is it wrong? I do. Uh, absolutely. Anyway, so I developed it because it was the only system that made sense to me. And uh, can I share it with you? Sure. All right. It's one, one room at a time, one area of that room at a time, and one thing at a time. And that sounds so simple, doesn't it? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> it sounds like it should be simple. There you go. I'll go along with that. Um, a lot of times, so when I'm when I'm doing these kind of kind of talks or or uh, an interactive summit, people will start to put in the chat. Yeah, you know that makes sense. That does kind of calm things down. I'll I'll explain it briefly. One room at a time. What do I mean by that? Uh, if you if you decide, okay, I'm going to do a little bit in my office and then I'll do a little bit in the bedroom. Frankly, from a practical point of view, by the time you get back to the office, you've forgotten where you were and you have to get back into character again, like an actor. And if you stick with the one area, then or the one room, then you can gain that sense of momentum. You gain that confidence, which every entrepreneur entrepreneur needs. And the overwhelm starts to melt away rather than bouncing back and forth. The next part is the one area of the room at a time. And same basic principles. Stick in stick with one, build your build your confidence. It can be a little challenging to decide where, but make your decision and and make it right. Third is one thing at a time, and that's it. Yeah. Quick, quick story. My very, very first client had a big L-shaped desk with uh, six, eight inches of paper cover everywhere. And she, on our first session, I was brand new. I didn't know what I was doing. So I said, okay, what's this top piece of paper? She looked at me and she said, there is no way I'm going through all of this single one by one. And I'm thinking, I've already taken her money. I don't know what to tell us to do. <laughs> I may have already spent it for all I know. <laughs> and she relented and she said, all right, I'll give it a shot. Well, in about five, six minutes, she starts flying through these papers saying, I do not need utility bills. Uh, I do not need them, Sam. I am. <laughs> if you have kids, <laughs> um, uh, my accountant does not need uh, bank statements. All of this I can get online. Immediately, her brain was searching for ways that would avoid the clutter com coming back in. And the very last thing was we threw away, uh, oh, golly, a bunch, let's say eight tra trade magazines, and they were not cheap. A couple of weeks later, she says, you know, Kitty, I was in the store and my arm just automatically reached for one of those trade magazines. I go, wait a minute now, I just threw out about 60, 80 bucks worth. I'll buy them every two or three months. If you do things slowly and methodically, then uh, rather than ripping and tearing, then you are training your brain. Your, your brain cannot train at the, the four-minute mile kind of thing. Take it bit by bit so that the clutter doesn't come back and you stay decluttered for life. Sounds good, huh? Yeah. And unfortunately, we're at the end of our time together, so I'm going to have to leave it right there. Take it slow. Take it easy. Be gentle with yourself. And yeah. see just, we're very production-oriented society. Just look at what you have produced by clearing off that one corner of your desk 
and then congratulate yourself. Celebrate it. That was a big deal. And then next time you'll get to celebrate a different pile that's on your desk. <laughs> so I want to thank you for being here, Kitty, and I, we should have a longer time together. So maybe we'll, we'll talk again in the future. Sounds good. Thank yeah. you. So for those of you who want to connect with Kitty, all the information is down below. She does have a free gift for everybody. Please click on the link. Communicate with Kitty or me. I can get you in touch with her, whichever you would like. Thank you so much for being here, Kitty. <laughs> Thanks for having me. And to the listeners, thank you so much for tuning in again. I hope you got some really valuable information. And I appreciate you so much. This is your host, Jean Border, with the Focus Practical Dreamers Journey podcast. Until next time. Thank you for tuning in to the Focused Practical Dreamers Journey, where we take out your emotional baggage and heal your emotional body so you get to enjoy the success you desire and deserve. Remember to visit our website at www.focusedpracticaldreamer.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Focused Practical Dreamer's Journey.